and they're a good group of kids, amen? Good to have them here with us. Thank you, uh, parents and friends, for bringing them to our service this morning. But we're going to be looking today in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, and the title of, of my message is God's Presence, that we have the presence of God with us, and He makes a difference in our lives. And So I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 33, we're going to be reading starting at verse 12. So go ahead and I'll give you a second to find that. We're going to be looking again at Moses who has been given a very difficult task in his life. And that was to lead the nation of Israel uh, to the promised land. And to take care of them and to oversee them. And, and he had, it was very difficult and it was kind of a, a, an upsetting time for him. Because he didn't know what was going to be taking place. So if you have your Bibles turned there, Exodus chapter 33, would you please stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. Exodus 33, starting again at verse 12. So let's go ahead and read. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and this I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he, God, said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he, Moses, said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the opportunity to sing these praises to you that we've done. Thank you, Lord, that your presence is here. And I pray, Father, that it would be breathed across this congregation, across those who are watching uh, on the live stream, and that, Father, you could just, just bless and, and work in our lives. And, Father, I pray for everyone here that may be struggling in a situation, that, Lord, you would just bless them and breathe that peace to them as well. And God, we love you for all you're doing. And I pray, Father, that the words I say today are not my words, but yours. I pray that this is not my message, but your message. And Father, I pray that the response of your people would be as you desire it. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We look at and we see in Exodus chapter 33, uh, uh, God's presence. Man, what, what a blessing it is. And sometimes I think that we go through our lives that we're not even really thinking about the presence of God and what it means to our lives. The thing that I want to bring out here is the thought that everyone is looking for stability and strength. Amen? Everybody in our world is looking for st something stable to, to grab a hold of. They're looking for strength and energy to, to make it through difficult times. The problem is they're trying to find it from a world that at its very best is unstable itself. So people are looking around trying to find something in their life to hold on to. Something to bank everything on. But yet what's so wrong is they're finding it in a world, as I said, that at its very, very best, our world is an unstable world. Amen? It's not something, that can, it's not something that's going to last. And if you've been around and watching the news and seeing everything that's going on, you find there is no stability in this world today. But yet so many people are trying to find that peace and that strength. But what we need to do is we need to be able to find it in the one place where it is. And that is through the very presence of God. Moses was again given a monumental task. And he basically came to the conclusion that God, we need you. If you're going to ask me to do this, we need you. And so what we see here today is something that I want to share with you that I want to share with uh, the, from the Scripture, the idea of what it is that God was given and what God does, says, this is what it's going to take. The first thing that it's going to take for us is us to have knowledge of Him. He said, let me know you, God. Let me know you. Let me, let me know who you are. Let me, let me feel you. Let me understand you. Let me see what's going on in my life. The thing about the knowledge of him that I want to look at first and foremost is that he tells us here, he knows you. Amen? Look what he tells us. He said, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me, yet you have said, I know you by name. He said, Moses, I know who you are. I know the things that you're going through. I know the struggles that you have. I want you to know, I know you. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that God knew you 
before you were even born. He knew who you were. He knew what purpose he had for you. He, 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 he knew all these things. And so he says, that's how well I know you. I knew you even before you were born. The second thing is he knows everything about you. Now, that's good news, bad news. Amen? The good news is, listen, God knows everything about you. Woo, yeah. The bad news is God knows everything about you. Amen? Just depending on where you're looking at it from. He knows everything about us. And that's, first of all, that's good news because, man, he knows us in an intimate way. But the bad news is he knows everything about us, even our very thoughts, our motives, our desires. He knows all of that. He knows what motivates us. He, he knows why you're even here today. He knows every thought you're thinking now. He knows every thought you've ever thought. He knows every thought that you'll have from this point on. He knows all that. You can't hide anything from God. Oh, but how we try, amen? Well, we're good at trying to hide. And we, we think as long as it's in secret, everything is fine. But God comes and tells him, I know you. Now, the good news, bad news is he knows us in all ways. He knows our motives. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything about us. But even with that, here's the thing that through knowledge of him, we need to know that he loves you. Even with the stuff, God loves you. No matter where you are today, God loves you. No matter what you've done in your life, God loves you. No matter what you're thinking in your thoughts, God still loves you. Now listen, it's good that we all can't read each other's minds. Amen? Amen? Yeah. It's good you can't read my mind. No. It's good that we don't know, we don't know everything about each other. Amen? Amen? I don't want to know everything about you. But I also don't want you to know everything about me. Because you know one thing I found out? If we really knew everything about each other, we'd have a hard time loving each other, wouldn't we? But here's the thing. God knows all those things that only you know. But yet he still loves you. Folks, that's good news. Amen? That's part of this knowledge of him is we, we have to know. And in order for you to know God, listen, my friend, you got to know that he loves you no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's gone in your life. He still loves you enough that he sent Jesus to die for you. That's how much he loves you. So he wants, first of all, for us to have knowledge of him, to know that he knows you and that he loves you. And my friend, that's very important. And, by, and because of that, what he now wants is that having a personal relationship with you. Even though he knows everything about you, even though he knows the thoughts that you think, the motives that you have, the reasons you do whatever it is you do, those things that you think are in secret, God knows it and he loves you. And listen, my friend, he still wants to have a personal relationship with you, with me. And it only comes through Jesus. You can't have it any other way. Now listen, he doesn't want you to know about him. He wants you to know him. He wants you to have a personal relationship. There's a difference between knowing. Man, you can know every, You can know a lot of the Bible. You can know a lot of the stories. You can know a lot of the scriptures. You can know a lot of the, 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 the stuff that goes on. You can know all that, but yet not know him. Case in point, years ago, whenever I was <clears throat> teaching and coaching, and I was working with youth. There was a young lady at Milfay, and uh, she was the daughter of whom, the guy that I would call my, my, my ministry dad. He's the one that kind of helped me into the ministry, helped me grow as a, in my first ministry, my first pastorate. And it was his daughter. Now, his daughter was fascinated. And fascinated is even, not even a good word. I can't go deep enough how this girl was infatuated with Garth Brooks. All right? Now, this was when, this was a long time ago, but Garth Brooks was just now skyrocketing into fame, man. Everybody knew him. And this girl was so enthralled by Garth Brooks that she knew everything about him. Man, she read stuff about Garth. She could tell you when he was born. She could tell you what he had for dinner. She could tell you this. She knew where he lived. As a matter of fact, it scared me because she'd drive by, she'd, she'd drive all the way to Yukon's where he's from, right? 
somewhere up in there. Anyway, and he would drive, she would drive by his house where he grew up. And just kind of sit out there and know that was Garth Brooks' house. She even at one time went to the prom dressed like Garth Brooks. No lie. She knew everything about him. Hey, she even sent, when he had his first child, sent a present to the child. Garth Brooks, who is now almost richer than any man in the world, didn't need any of our gifts. She gave, him a, gave his baby a gift. She knew everything about him. But here's the deal. No matter how much she knew Garth, Garth had never heard of her name. He could have walked in the room and saw her unless somehow he had gotten her picture and put it up to say, to avoid this young woman. (laughs) That would have been the only way he would have known her. My friend, I believe that's the way a lot of people sometimes try to do God. Oh, he knows us. And we do a lot of stuff. We get to try to know about him. But that's not what he wants. He wants a personal relationship with us. He wants us to know him. Kind of like what Paul said for us. Paul said in Philippians 3.10 for himself that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. When Paul said about all of us in Ephesians 3.19, he says, I want you to know the love of Christ. In other words, I want you to experience the love of Jesus Whenever we look at in John 14, 6, that he wants us to have that relationship, that we need to understand this one thing. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one knows the Father. No one comes to the Father unless you come through me. Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross that we could have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not just know about him, but know him intimately Know him personally. Be be tied together almost, if you will. And God says, that's how much I need you to know his presence. I I want you to know him. Know that he knows you. And I want you to know that that, that you can know him intimately today. And not just settle for that outward knowledge of, well, I know about God. I read about God. I hear about God. But, oh, my friend, today you could have strength and courage if you will just come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ and have a personal relationship with God. Do you know that? Not do you know about God, but my friend today, do you know him? Sitting here at home, if you're watching on this live stream, do you know him intimately? Do you have a personal relationship with him? Folks, I'm I'm about to do something I I don't think I've ever done in the whole years that I've been preaching. Didn't even do it in the first service, but boy, God is just now all of a sudden impressed upon me to do something. You've heard about God wanting you to know him, and he knows you, and he knows everything about you, and how much he loves you, and he sent Jesus to die for you, that our hope and our peace comes through him. And we can not get to have that intimate relationship with him in any other way except coming to Jesus. My friends, what I want to do right now is I want to pause my sermon because I I want to offer an invitation right here, right now. We're not going to sing. Musicians, y'all don't have to come up here. But I want 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 everybody to bow your head for just a moment. We're going to have a moment of invitation. Because I don't, I, don't I don't want to go any further to talk about God's presence if you don't know God's presence in your life this morning. So if you're sitting here, if you're at home and you're watching this, I want you to take just a moment. And I want you to determine, do you know God? Has there been that point in your life that you gave your life to him, that you received him into your heart, and that God saved you? Do you know that today? Oh, if you don't, you really don't know the presence of God in your life. Then today I want you to call upon his name. Say, God, I know that I need you this morning. Would you come into my heart and would you save me today? Don't distract anybody and don't be distracted by anybody. Do you Know God today. Would you call upon his name this morning? Lord, come into my heart and save me. I need you desperately today, Lord. Father, hear the prayers of of, of these people. Look in the hearts of every person here, every person watching. God, that they might know you intimately through Jesus Christ. Father, hear us today. Save these people today that need you, that are calling out to you right now. Father, hear them. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray. 
Amen. My friend, listen to me. Right then, right now, if you called upon the name of Jesus and you asked him to forgive you of your sin and he came into your life, now you know what I'm talking about. Now you know him. You don't just know of him. You know him. You have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. And after this service today, man, if you made that decision, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know that you prayed that prayer. I would love to know that you know Jesus now as your Lord and Savior. Even those that are at home watching this, man, I'd love to hear from you. If you know Jesus is your Savior today. Because here's what I want to finish out my sermon with. Because if you know Him today, if you made that decision just a while ago, or if you have made it years ago, doesn't matter, and now you know Him because you know Him as your Lord and Savior, then I want you to do to know His presence and that, that now you can have strength. You now know His presence. You don't just know Him. You now know His presence. And in His presence, you will now have a renewed sense of strength in your life. That's where we get our strength, amen, is through Jesus Christ. And today, that's where we can gain our strength to make it through whatever it is we're going through in our lives today, that we can have strength. Man, yesterday, I went, I went to Oklahoma City and, and, and went to the service of a man who was almost another one of my spiritual fathers, man, my, my leader. He was my pastor years ago, great man of God, great man of God. And got to go and celebrate his life and his ministry and what he meant to me. Man, he's even been in this church a couple of times and he's preached. Man, he was a powerful man of God. But he, 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 he gave, his life was, was taken from him through cancer. And, and man, he was even strong through those things. But I walked in and I remember walking into his wife yesterday morning. And man, I hugged her and I said, Pam, how are you doing? Miss Pam, how are you doing? She said, Harold, I said, it's amazing. She said, it's different than I ever thought. He said, she said, I have such a peace. I have such a peace. And it was right there. I said, Lord, I want that kind of peace. I want that strength. I want to be able to look people in the eye when things are tough. And I want to say, boy, I have a peace through this. Oh, she wasn't happy. She wasn't laughing about it. But, oh, she said, Harold, I have a strength. I have a peace now. My friends, if you've received Jesus into your life, you now have possibility of that same peace and strength. Amen. It's yours. Church, listen to me. We might sometimes forget this, but if we have Jesus in our lives, we have a source of strength there. If we have that, we have a source of stability. The one thing that people are wanting in their lives that we talked about at this first, that they want strength and they want something stable. They want something to hold their life on. They want something that's going to be there and it's going to last. It's not going to shake away. It's not going to burn away. But we have that stability. My friend, if you receive Jesus into your heart this morning, you now have that stability. It's there for you. Oh, but you have a hope. You have hope this morning. If you receive Jesus into your life, you have hope. If you have Jesus already into your life, you have a hope that the rest of the world doesn't have. Even in our mourning, Paul says that I pray that you would mourn as people that have hope. That's what Miss Pam had. Oh, she was mourning over her husband. Oh, but she had a hope in Jesus Christ. Oh, she had hope. My friend, listen, we're living in a world that is void of hope. Look out there. Listen for just a little bit. And you will hear the hopelessness that's going on. Oh, but there's hope in Jesus. That if you have that relationship with him, you now have hope. And then you have courage. Courage that will allow you to continue to go even when you don't think you can. Even when you're not sure of anything in your life. You have courage to move forward. The same courage that Moses said that if, my, if your presence isn't with me, then I don't want to go. Because I need your presence. Just like Jacob in the book of Genesis 31-3. Whenever he was going back, God had called him to go back to his brother who just years before had vowed to kill him. If you ever saw him again, I'm going to kill you. Because of what you've done to me. He had, was called to God to go back. But God looked at Jacob and he said, I will be with you. 
Do not fear. Do not worry about going back. I will be with you. Even in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, when Joshua is now being intimidated by looking out across the vast territory and the enemy that God had placed before him and said, you're going to lead my nation of Israel now. I want you to go. And he told Joshua in 1, 9, he said, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You don't have to worry about it. I look at Gideon in Judges chapter 6, verse 16, when Gideon was feeling so insignificant. He said, man, I'm, I'm from the least tribe of Israel. And he said, not only that, but I'm the least of the least tribe. I can't lead your people. I can't lead this army against this vast army that you want me to go. And, and God looked at Gideon, and he said, I will be with you. Do not be afraid. We look at Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 9, when uh, Jeremiah felt useless, felt like he couldn't do anything. Nothing was working. He said, and he was being intimidated by people. God told him in Jeremiah 1, 9, he said, I will fight, people will fight against you, but you will not be overcome. For I am with you, and I will rescue you. Man, we look at David in Psalm 23, verse 4, and he even says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For why? You are with me. We look and we see Jesus. Man, when he was sending us out into the world, he said, I want you to go, and I want you to baptize, I want you to teach them, and know that I'm going to be with you, even to the ends of the earth. I am with you. My presence is there. It is his presence that's going to give me strength. It's his presence that's going to give us stability in our life. It is him that's going to give us hope. It is him that's going to give us courage. His presence is here today, and his presence wants to work in our lives. And my friends, we can't or should not want to do anything unless his presence is with us. If you receive Jesus into your heart this morning, you now have all that. He says, do not be afraid. I'll be with you. And I, and he promises this as I close out. I will never, listen, I will never, 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 never means never, ever. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care what you're going through today. I don't care how tough it is. Man, I know sometimes we enter into some difficult times. Times that shake us to the very core of our being. But oh, my friend, listen to me. You have strength, stability, and you have hope, and you have courage through the blood of Jesus. Because he's not left you in this time. He is there with you. So I encourage you, don't you go through any part of your life without the presence of God in it. Oh, turn to him this morning. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you've done. You turn to him this morning. If you've never received Jesus in your heart, maybe right during that time of invitation you decided that it wasn't going to be for you. But yeah, right now you're saying, boy, I do need some of that. I need that stuff. Man, I need it right now because of the things I'm going through. Listen, it's still available to you. All you got to do is turn to Jesus. And man, he can bring a peace beyond understanding. If you'll just do that today. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I, I've been saved, but I know I've been tracking off on other directions. Listen, God's still there with you. He's calling you back. And you say, well, Pastor, I don't know that I'm worthy to go back. Well, you're right. You're probably not because you weren't worthy to be there in the first place. None of us are. Oh, but look at the prodigal son who took off on his own and went out. And, and man, he, he, he blew everything in life. And he had struggles and turmoils. And he finally came to, the Bible says he came to himself. And, man, he went back home. And the dad was there. The dad was looking for him. The dad was waiting for him. My friend, today, Jesus is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. And oh, why do we continue to go through this life hurting and being unstable and having all these things rock us when we have everything that we need in the presence of God through Jesus Christ? Oh, Father, hear our prayer today. Lord, as we step into this time of invitation, Lord, we've already had one. Lord, we're about to have another. Father, I pray that you would speak to the hearts of every person in this room. I pray that you speak to the hearts of everyone watching on this live feed. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you save souls this morning? Oh, my friends, just call upon Jesus. Man, I can't say it enough. Just call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Would you call on him today? Would you come this morning? Right there, if you're a Christian, man, would you, would you come back to Jesus? He's waiting on you. You don't have to pay any penance. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is say, Lord, here I am. I, I, I want to come home. And he'll say, come home.
come home today? Oh, right there. Would you, would you just speak to him? Let him speak to you. God, give us strength. Give us the stability. Give us that hope and give us that courage today. God, we need your presence in our lives. Hear our prayers. My friend, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to get back into time of praise and worship. If God's speaking to your heart and you need to pray with somebody, we'll be here. If you're, if you're at home or you're watching this later on the live feed, maybe you'll just contact us at the church. Man, I, I'll, I'll pray with you. I'll listen. He wants you. He wants you. Would you come this morning? Would you come this morning? Now as we enter back into time of praise and worship, man, you sing as people that have hope. Sing as people that have something to sing about, to rejoice. Offer it up to Him. Father, hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and would you sing with us? Hi, I'm Harold Gacious, Pastor of First Baptist West. And I want to thank you for joining us today with our live stream service. And I hope that you enjoyed your time with us. But even more importantly, I hope that God was able to speak to you and work th uh, through you here uh, with our time together. I'd like to also just invite you to come and join us to be in person here at First Baptist West if we're within driving distance. If not, continue to join us with our live stream service. And also you can go to our YouTube page and we'll be able to have our uh, sermons outlines there as well. But we want to thank you again for coming. And if you have any questions or prayer requests or anything that I can do to help you, uh, please contact me here at the church and, and I'll get back with you as soon as we can. And we again hope you have a great day and God bless you.